questions to answer is, is it monogenic diabetes? Is it deficiency or resistance? And finally, what's the cause? So if you go into monogenic diabetes, we already discussed this in detail, that you have to consider MODI usually in a pubertal onset with a low chance of ketosis and a low chance of autoimmunity. So a lean individual, if you're thinking of type 1 diabetes, if their insulin requirement is below 0.5 unit per kg per day, after one year of onset of diabetes, think of MODI as a possibility. The MODI family history is common, but not essential as Vibha said that this could be because of a new mutation which has happened. So 10 to 25 years is a typical manifestation. It is autosomal dominant disease. The ketosis and other abnormalities are rare. So you have to think of other scenarios. And especially if your antibody is negative, you start thinking of a possibility of that. So type 1 individuals who have no insulin needs slash less than 0.5 unit per kg per day. C-peptide is persistently detectable. They have a strong family history. Antibody is negative. Think of a monogenic diabetes. In the setting of type 2 diabetes, if there is no obesity, obviously, you get questioned in that perspective. Do all type 2 diabetes need to be obese? Can they be normal weight? Normal weight. So generally, they are overweight and above because they lose weight also. And often, we will see that pre-diabetes will be more obese compared to diabetes because diabetes patients would have lost the weight. So if your onset of diabetes is before 6 months of days, you need genetic studies for neonatal diabetes beyond 6 months. If your insulin requirement is low and your GAD antibody is negative, you should do a genetic study. This is what our protocol is. The next question is how do you differentiate deficiency and resistance? So of course, you have options of doing either the insulin or the C-peptide. I've already said C-peptide is a more robust assay. It's equimolar, longer half-life. So any day, you will prefer C-peptide in that regards. What are the usual levels which will be there in MODI compared to type 1 diabetes for C-peptide? Fasting levels, let's say. Point 0.6 nanogram per ml. And here it is usually like 1.5, 1.6. So they are low, but not absolutely low in the setting of monogenic diabetes. Insulin resistance, you will get clues from acanthosis, high insulin requirements, and very, very high level of insulin. So if you measure insulin there, you will find hundreds. That will be the type of insulin which is there. Now the cause, of course, go for clinical parameters. If there is history of macrosomia or hypoglycemia, think of HNF 1, 4 alpha. If there is a mild fasting hyperglycemia, you're talking about GCK defect. If it's a perennial progressive, you're thinking of HNF 1 and 4 alpha. Optic atrophy, again, Wolfram syndrome, Alstrom and Bartle Beetle syndrome. Deafness in the setting of mitochondrial or Wolfram. Megaloblastic anemia, think of Rogers syndrome as a possibility. Genitomegaly and acanthosis, think of an insulin receptor resistant defect. Loss of subcutaneous fat, lipodystrophy variants, and diabetes insipidus. Of course, we said Wolfram and pro converted. So, if you have something unusual going on, you can know okay, this patient doesn't look like type 1. Now, the genetic testing is available. We can think of those disorders. And one very important if the mother and the family from the maternal inheritance is there, we are talking about mitochondrial disorders in that perspective. So if you have HNF1 beta, always go for renal ultrasound and uterine anomalies which are there. 1 and 4 alpha, go for liver ultrasound and HDL level. Hymen transporter, do a hearing abnormality, blood count and B12 level. For Wolfram, look for vision, hearing, urine and blood osmolarity. So we have an 18-year-old girl with increased urine output. RBS is 258, HbA1c is 8%, BMI is lean. There is no acanthosis. Diagnosis type 1 diabetes. Do you agree? Recently diagnosed. So she was started on insulin. So you're thinking of type 1. But on insulin, she develops recurrent hypoglycemia even at the minimal lows also. Very, very low, sir. But even with two units, one unit, she does hypoglycemia. So clearly, we'll do an antibody status, which was negative. So now you should think of, so you should do a genetic study, which showed a HNF1 alpha. So if you have an older individual looking very stable, 
first time with diabetes mild elevation and with mild hyper insulin they will have a hypoglycemia think of a hnf defect in that regard 11 year old girl with routine investigations fasting is slightly high prandial is slightly not that much high non obese individual no acanthosis SBR is 6.4, ketone is negative. What are you thinking of? So this is typical of GCK. Insulin will cause hypoglycemia, GAD is negative, and you will get a history in the mother or father. So check the familial screening becomes important. So this is like a GCK defect. Follow up on lifestyle measures, there is normal development, 15 years later she is having pregnancy. What is the risk of a pregnancy in these individuals? What problems can happen during pregnancy? So you should look for macrosomia in that regard. Sweetal overgrowth was there. So you should treat in that scenario. 15-year-old girl with polyuria, fasting was 120, so not very high, but 2-hour value was very high. HbA1c was 9.5%, non-ketotic, non-obese, no acanthosis. Family history is present. So does it mean this is Modi? So just the presence will not finalize. So you have to you have to consider in type one first, but you have to think of other things later. So there was more prandial increase, fasting glucose was on the higher side. Looks like a transcription factor modi rather than a primary modi there. There was neonatal hypoglycemia. Yes. So we'll and there was history of neonatal hypoglycemia suggesting HNF 4 alpha. So this is the typical jump which happens, which is suggestive that this is most likely a transcription factor modi. Now on insulin 0.6 unit per kg per day, uh glibenclamide was then started once the genetic mutation was found, developed severe hypoglycemia. So what do you think went wrong? We should not start glibenclamide at that dose. I told you that they are very, very sensitive. So 10 to 25 percent of the adult dose. This is very high for the adult dose itself. So it was very, very high dose at which it was started. So you should use a low dose of sulfonylurea, and then you may think of other options like linides, which are more easy to control. Their rapid onset and GLP-1 receptor analog can also be considered. 15-year-old girl with osmotic symptoms, fasting is high, 2-hour value is also very high, HbA1c is high, DK, insulin was given, lean, no acanthosis, family history is there in mother. Now, the other thing is that her sugars are again, sometimes they are going very low, sometimes they are going very high, they are not giving insulin for 2 days, sugars go high, they give, they become low. So, typical presentation with DK, but the fluctuating sugar and family history in mother. Yeah, family, no think of some genetic form in that regard. Yeah. So there was renal cyst which was seen in both mother and the child, and there was HNF1 beta defect which was found. 17-year-old boy with weight loss, sugars were 140, going up to 220 on glucose, HbA1c is high but non-ketotic. There is slight obesity, overweight, no acanthosis, metformin resulted in normal blood glucose and it was stopped. What do you think? Hmm. And there was neonatal hypoglycemia also there. So, milder form of defects again will be there, which you will find. 11-year-old girl with type 1 diabetes diagnosed at 8 years of age, insulin 1 unit per day, kg per day, visual complaints and retinopathy. So, the doctor said that you have developed very early retinopathy. So, what do you think here? 
Do you expect a retinopathy in three years? So you have to think of alternate things. This is not really a retinopathy. This could be optic atrophy. So again, if you have an unusual presentation, do a GAD antibody, which was negative, and then WLMS1 defect was there. 19-year-old girl with developmental delay, visual defects and deafness, random glucose was 240, HbA1c was 8.4 and GAD was negative. Metformin resulted in sudden deterioration. So what do you think is happening here? So this was going more in favor of a mitochondrial diabetes. There is deafness, there is other defects. So MIDD is the manifestation, mitochondrial diabetes with deafness. 14-year-old boy with obesity, polydactyly, nyctalopia, sugars are 144, A1C 7.4. So what are we thinking of? Yeah. And this is something which can cause a problem. So always look for the extra fingers because I think sometimes we will miss also because they may not have classical manifestations. So always any child with obesity, they may have on the feet itself. So lifestyle measure and metformin is required. 16-year-old girl with hyperglycemia, blood sugar 140 to 220, HbA1c 8.4 and lean individual, low C-peptide, GAD is negative. There is anemia, she has numbness in the hands and pigmentation. Thymine, thymine transporter defect, so we have to think of a possibility of a Rogers syndrome in that regards. 17-year-old girl with hirsutism, FGS is 21 with amenorrhea, severe acanthosis but lean. So she has amenorrhea, hyperandrogenism within a lean individual and she also has diabetes. Ultrasound shows a very large ovary, PCO appearance. What are you thinking of? So this is a milder form of genetic diabetes. Metformin, estrogen progesterone may result in improvement in that perspective. Three-year-old boy with failure to thrive, looks emaciated with complete muscular appearance, loss of subcutaneous fat, glucose is high, hepatomegaly, high ALT and triglycerides. And it's very early onset, so you have to think of a congenital form, which is rare and you can give leptin in this scenario. 12-year-old boy with polyuria, developmental delay, hyperphagia, there is infantile hypotonia, fasting sugar is 140, 2 hours is 220. So what are we thinking of? Yeah. No, infantile hypotonia and hypophagia. So this is a typical case of Pradovili syndrome, which you should be always wary about. And you can think of metformin and GLP-1 receptor analog. So to finalize in terms of management, HNF1 and 4-alpha are exclusively sensitive to sulfonylurea. Give a low dose. You can also consider GLP-1 receptor analogs in linide. The other options are GCK defect. You think of lifestyle, insulin treatment for fetal macrosomia, essentially. HNF1 beta, usually they will require sulfonylurea initially, but then they will not respond, need insulin. Wolfram will require insulin. Mitochondrial, definitely never give them metformin, give them insulin. Lipodystrophy is something which will respond to leptin. And as I said, rare scenario of severe insulin resistance, you can use alternate pathway.